Hey there, Looney Bird. Hey there, Billy Bob! Chuck E. Cheese's, known as the place where a kid can be a kid, has been a part of everyone's childhood, including me. This popular pizza chain with arcades and animatronics has spread all around the globe, from California to Texas to Florida to Illinois. But there's one location that I would like to talk about, and that place is Cincinnati, Ohio. However, I won't just be talking about Chuck and his gang, but I will also be talking about Billy Bob the Bear and his friends at Showbiz Pizza Place, since they also have history with the city. So in this video, I'm going to go over the entire history of these two restaurants in the Queen City. From two short-lived pizza time theaters, to two Showbiz pizzas, including a fan favorite, and the current location which many don't like too much, and maybe even a bonus or two, this is the history of Chuck E. Cheese's and Showbiz Pizza in Cincinnati, Ohio. So before I talk about Chuck E. Cheese's and Showbiz Pizza in Cincinnati, I want to quickly go over the history of each one. Chuck E. Cheese's was founded on May 17, 1977, and opened its first location in San Jose, California. It was created by Nolan Bushnell, who was also the co-founder of the video game company Atari. He wanted to make a place that families could hang out and play the latest arcade games, since before this arcades were seen as dangerous places due to violence. As for Showbiz Pizza, it was founded on March 3, 1980, and opened its first location in Kansas City, Missouri. It was founded by Robert Brock, who was also the founder of the Brock Hotel Corporation. He was originally a franchisee with Pizza Time Theater, but then saw companies making more advanced animatronics, and decided to start his own company, with the help of Aaron Fector, the founder of Creative Engineering. As for Cincinnati, Ohio's history, it's a little complicated. So Cincinnati, Ohio was founded in 1877 and was originally named Losantiville. However, Arthur St. Clair, the first governor of the Northwest Territory, didn't like the name and suggested they change the name to Cincinnati, which is based off Lucius Quintus Cincinnatus, a hero of the Roman Republic. It currently has a population of 1,764,000, making it the third largest city in the state of Ohio. Obviously a great place for a one-toothed bear and a big fat pizza rat to expand to. Now I will be cheating a little bit, as I'm going to talk about the Pizza Time Theaters in Cincinnati first, even though they were not the first to come to the city. So don't get triggered that the dates will be out of order. But with all that said, let's go back exactly 40 years to start the next chapter.
The Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater of Cincinnati, Ohio opened in May 1982 to the joy of locals everywhere. The restaurant was located at Casanelli Square, right across from the Tri-County Mall. The building was originally a Trump's adult bar and restaurant before becoming a CEC. Not sure if it's related to the Trump that we all know, but it's possible. The building space was about 13,000 square feet and cost around $7,000 to create. Now I should go ahead and say this even though you probably already knew this. There is barely any information on this location. Like seriously, it was easier researching the Owensboro, Kentucky location than it was this. There's also no pictures or videos of the location either, so for the purpose of this chapter I will be using photos taken at other locations. I did ask some Cincinnati historians on Facebook about the location, but they didn't provide anything noteworthy. But as always, I will try my best to explain what this location had to offer. The nice thing is, I could probably guess what this location had based on what other Pizza Time theaters had to offer at the same time. For example, they most likely had brown walls, the flags in the showroom, and other miscellaneous things. They did have a salad bar, the prize corner which was called Jasper's General Store, as well as an ice cream sundae bar, but other locations had that too. There was of course a game room, however I don't have a list of what games they had, so it was probably the same games the other locations had. They did have a cheese wall with a slide, a couple of kitty rides like the Chuck E. Cheese Carousel, and of course a giant ball pit. And just like every other Pizza Time theater around the time, they had an animatronic stage referred to as the balcony stage, since the animatronics were on a balcony attached to the wall. There was also a large maze at the bottom of the stage where kids and adults could crawl around under the animatronics. Speaking of the animatronics, they were the real stars of the restaurant, as they performed daily every 15 minutes. These animatronics are called Cyberamics, and were the most common throughout restaurants at the time. They were called the Pizza Time Players, and it includes Mr. Munch, Jasper T. Jowls, Chuck E. Cheese, Helen Henny, and Pasquale. They also had the Warblets, too. It's unlikely that this location had any of the other balcony guest characters besides Helen, since a lot of them were retired at the time of this location's opening. But there was a few guest characters that made it into the restaurant, and one of them went by the name of The King. The King was a large 9 foot tall lion animatronic that was made to resemble Elvis Presley, and he also performed to pre-recorded Elvis songs. He performed in an area of the restaurant called The Lounge, which also had tables set up around his stage so customers could get extremely close to him. And don't worry, this is not the last time we will be talking about him in this video. Now if you thought one guest character was crazy, what if I told you that there was actually another guest character at the location? But unlike the king who played rock and roll music on a guitar, this guest played something a little more calmer. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on the History Of series, say hello to Dolly Dimples. Dolly was a larger-than-life singing hippopotamus who played the piano inside the cabaret part of the restaurant. Fun fact, at first the animatronics were originally created for the adults, but Dolly was especially created for the adults due to her show tapes having lots of innuendos. But that didn't stop kids from watching her show, and ultimately her show tapes were toned down after a while. Something noteworthy to mention is that, unlike the king, Dolly was activated by tokens that people would insert into a machine in front of her stage, and that's how she would start performing. Despite all the activities offered here, it apparently didn't bring in enough business, not to mention the pizza was apparently not good. So in the fall of 1984, the Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater of Cincinnati closed after two years in operation. Now it's kind of a mystery as to why it closed, as I couldn't find any information on it, but I have two possible theories. Number one, the lease for the building expired and they decided not to renew it. And number two, this is the most likely reason, in 1984, as we all know, Pizza Time Theater filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and was purchased by Showbiz Pizza. 
Well, when a company goes bankrupt, they usually close the stores that are underperforming. So it's possible that this location was one that didn't do well and resulted in its closure. But whatever the reason, Chuck E. Cheese was gone from the Queen City, but we're not actually done with Cincy Pizza Time Theaters just yet. what all of the Pizza Time players have done now. They've invented a Chuck E. Cheese cube, and it's available only at Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theaters. Pizza and fun have always gone together at Chuck E.'s place. Great tasting pizza made with the finest mouth-watering ingredients. Characters guaranteed to make you laugh and smile. And right now, on your own Chuck E. Cube. It's only 99 cents with the purchase of any large pizza. What a value. So hurry in now to Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater. Highway 100 between Oklahoma and... Let's go back a little bit. So about one month after the first location opened in June 1982, a second Pizza Time Theater opened in Cincinnati. Unfortunately, there's even less information on this location than there was on the other one, and again, no pictures or videos. But I do know that the building that Chuck E. Cheese took over was a furniture store. Not sure what furniture store, but it was a furniture store. The building was located at Prospect Square, which was right across from the Northgate Mall. Since there's no information on this location, I have to guess what they had to offer. I would guess that it was extremely similar to the first location. Same attractions, same type of food, and the balcony stage animatronics as well as the King and Dolly Dimples. I wish I did know more about this location, but there's literally nothing, which is sad. This location apparently did worse than the first location, as on October 4th, 1983, the location closed, after a little over a year in operation. Again, it's a mystery on why this location closed, although people have said that the area wasn't the best at the time, so maybe that was the reason. But I believe the reason it closed was because of the 1983 video game crash that affected tons of arcades, including Pizza Time Theater. The crash was actually the reason why Pizza Time Theater went bankrupt in 1984 which is also what closed the first Cincinnati location. But now you're probably wondering, what happened to the locations? Where are they today? I mean, it's been 40 years. Starting with the first location at Casanelli Square, it was pretty hard to find out what happened to this location, as I had to do a lot of digging. You see, when I typed the address onto Google Maps, I came up with this. Nothing. Nothing but a road and a few businesses beside it. Could any of these businesses be the former location? No. These buildings are too new, so I had to keep searching. Then I noticed that there was a business nearby with the exact same address as Chuck E. Cheese. That business was Radiant Nails, which was part of a strip mall. Also, that business is oddly enough located right next to an abandoned Toys R Us. Is this the former location? I mean, it would make sense to have Chuck E. Cheese and Toys R Us right next to each other. Well, I'm not sure, but it's definitely possible. Especially since the exterior does look a lot like a Pizza Time Theater exterior. However, while researching, I received a comment on my community post by YouTube user Pinkerton National Detective Agency, saying that they used the website Historic Aerials and found a photo of the area from 1985 and that there was a building located on the left side of the road below the empty lot, which was later demolished. So it is extremely likely that this was the original location. But until I find a picture of the exterior, I don't know what happened to the first Pizza Time Theater of Cincinnati. If anybody wants to do their own detective work, or to simply visit the area, the address is 11400 Princeton Pike, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45246. And if you do visit the area, make sure to take a video. I'd love to see the area in person. Moving on to the second Pizza Time Theater in Cincinnati, it's a lot easier to locate since the building is still standing. The building is now home to a half price books. At least I think. I mean, that's what's shown on Google Maps. 
Speaking of Google Maps, if you type the address into Google, it will actually come up as a former Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater. Credit to Studio C Entertainment for pointing that out. If you want to visit this former location, the address is 9712 Colerain Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45251. And again, get a video or even pictures. Let's see if there's any remnants of Chuck E. Cheese's nearby. So this concludes the chapter about the two Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theaters in Cincinnati, Ohio. I wish I could find more information and photos on these locations. They could definitely help answer some of my unanswered questions. But now we're going to take a break from Chuck and his friends and move on to a different gang of animals at their own pizza restaurant. Showbiz Pizza is so good! We make the dough fresh every day Pile on the good things It's great, I think We make them and bake them And serve them with pride At Showbiz Pizza Place Showbiz Pizza Place Great fun and great pizza Come for the pizza and stay for the fun At Showbiz Pizza Place Okay, let's go a little further back before the first Pizza Time Theater opened in Cincinnati. A different restaurant with the same concept opened. And that restaurant was... Showbiz Pizza. That's right, Showbiz Pizza actually came to Cincinnati first. In fact, most people in Cincinnati probably didn't know who Chuck E. Cheese even was. Okay, maybe that's a stretch. The Showbiz Pizza of Cincinnati, Ohio opened on Wednesday, November 11, 1981, as the second Showbiz of Cincinnati. The first being the Sharonville location, but I'm not going to talk about that location in this video. It was also the 36th Showbiz Pizza location opened. The nice thing about this location is that there's a ton of documentation on it, mostly because it was around for a long time and very beloved so I will be able to go in-depth with this location's history way more than the others. Sadly, there are no exterior photos, so I don't know exactly what that looked like, though it probably looked like any other showbiz pizza location that opened around that time. The inside was nothing too special, just a regular showbiz pizza interior, but they did have a lot to offer, way more than what Chuck E. Cheese had. They had a larger playroom with over 60 arcade games, like the classic skee-ball and a game called Dig Dug. And for smaller children, there was an area that had scaled-down games, a slide, a Billy Bob merry-go-round, and a quote-unquote magic cave. I'm not sure what that is, maybe some sort of play place? There was also a salad bar, and they sold other food items like sandwiches, ice cream, and even beer, for the adults that is. And of course the pizza, which was probably better than what Chuck E. Cheese had. There were two dining areas at the Showbiz Pizza. The first was a sports room, which is a room that had rustic decor and pictures of local athletes and teams on the walls. Most likely the Cincinnati Reds or the Cincinnati Bengals. There was also a large big screen TV where people could watch sports games on, as well as numerous sit-down video games. This is also where Showbiz would see any minor league teams who were celebrating a win there. The second dining area was the main dining area, referred to as the showroom. This is where you could go to get the real entertainment, provided by the Rockafire Explosion. This band of animated animals performed on three stages every three minutes, singing popular songs and performing comedy routines. The characters on stage included Rolf the Wolf with his puppet Earl, Duke LaRue the drum playing dog, Fats Geronimo the gorilla on the keyboard, Beach Bear on the guitar, Mitzi Mozzarella the lead female singer who's also a mouse, Billy Bob the bear who's playing the guitar, and who's also the mascot of Showbiz Pizza, and last but not least Looney Bird, the drunk bird who drinks gas and lives in a can. There were also a few prop characters that would pop up from time to time, such as the sun, the moon, Choo Choo, 
the bear cub, and the birthday spider named Antioch. There was also a Billy Bob mascot who was used when the band wasn't performing, or when there was a birthday party. Billy Bob also made multiple appearances outside of Shopa's Pizza, though I'm not sure what events Colerain's Billy Bob attended. As the years went by, Showbiz was still able to draw new visitors and even hosted a ton of events. For example, they held teen nights every Friday night. This was pretty common for most Showbiz and Pizza Time Theater locations at the time, so it's not strange to see it here. But what I do find interesting is that several church groups held events at this particular location. There was one event that even had a buffet and a live band. Not sure why they didn't use the Rock of Fire explosion, but maybe church folks don't like singing animals. The biggest event to happen, not just to this location, but to all Showbiz locations, was in 1986, when Showbiz merged with Pizza Time Theater and became one company. And so with the two companies coming together, that meant that Chuck E. Cheese could start appearing at Showbiz Pizza locations. And so that's exactly what happened. Even though Billy Bob was still the showbiz mascot, Chuck E. Cheese was also seen at the stores, including the one in Colerain. But little did we know that just in a few years, Chuck's stay would become a little more permanent. But before we continue Colerain's story, I have to quickly go over the other showbiz pizza that was located in Cincinnati. And no, I'm not talking about the one in Sharonville. I bet that pizza tastes good. Mm -hmm. You've never seen a place like show this pizza place will serve you a pizza second to none. So come for the pizza, stay for the fun. Showbiz Pizza Place with over 60 electronic games, pizza baked fresh every day, and the stage show extravaganza on three stages. So come for the pizza, stay for the Exactly one year after the opening of Colerain's Showbiz Pizza, on November 11th, 1982, a second location opened on Highland Avenue, about 10 minutes away from Colerain's location. Unfortunately, there is not a whole lot of information on this location compared to Colerain, but similarly to the second Pizza Time Theater, it was probably the same as Colerain's location. It of course had a rock of fire explosion, a game room, and all the same foods, but I'm not sure if they had a sports room, but it's, but it's possible they did. I do know that they had a multicolored ball pit, but obviously they did as every location had one. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm not sure if Colerain actually had a ball pit, as I couldn't find any photos of it. They probably did, but it just wasn't documented. Maybe it was in that magic cave in the kids area. This Showbiz Pizza also held multiple events throughout its lifetime. For example, Showbiz often held these colander nights, usually on a Wednesday. Basically what you would do is you would decorate a colander with spaghetti and then wear it on your head and you could get some cool prizes. Now this was not exclusive to the Highland location, but people on Facebook specifically remember it from that location. So I'm guessing Colerain didn't do it as often. The other event I want to talk about that occurred at this location was a small carnival held by the Muscular Dystrophy Association in the Showbiz parking lot that took place in June 1985. Now I don't know what was at this carnival, but it probably had standard cheap food and rides, and I'm sure Billy Bob probably showed up from time to time. Sadly, this would be the last major event to be held at the Highland Showbiz Pizza, as in December of 1985, the location closed after five years in operation. The news didn't really shock people as they could just go to the other showbiz ten minutes away. In fact, I believe Colerain's showbiz was a major factor in Highland's closure. Either that or because showbiz was starting to struggle around that time and was closing locations that didn't perform well. Whatever the reason was, the Highland Showbiz Pizza was still closed, and everything inside was auctioned off a month later. The building sat abandoned for a while, with the occasional business filling the space. Today, as of 2022, the building is now home to a Buick car dealership. Which, speaking of that, 
I noticed these brick patterns on the side of the buildings. They look very familiar. Are these remnants of Shoba's Pizza? Maybe. Now with Highland gone, we can now continue Colrain Showbiz Pizza's history. And let's just say you might want to get your tissues ready. Since time began, kids have found ways to have fun. Today, after all these years, kids are having more fun than ever. By early 1991, the Showbiz Pizza on Colerain Avenue was still going strong, but behind the scenes within the Showbiz Pizza Time Incorporated company, things were anything but going strong. You see, the company was trying to get the rights to the Rock of Fire explosion, but Aaron Fector, the creator of the band, didn't want to give up the rights to the band, and so instead the company created something that will make a showbiz fan's spine tingle, Concept Unification. For those of you unaware, Concept Unification was this process where the Rock of Fire explosion would go completely extinct and be stripped down to their endoskeletons, only to be replaced by the Chuck E. Cheese characters, also known as Munch's Make Believe Band. Rolf the Wolf became Chuck E. Cheese himself, Mitzi Mozzarella became Helen Henny, Fats Geronimo became Mr. Munch, which speaking of Munch, he actually has a unique keyboard front. You see, the organ front is really only seen on road stages, but this one's on a three stage. So yeah, pretty cool. But anyway, Beach Bear became Jasper T. Jowls, and Duke LaRue became everyone's favorite, Pasquale the Chef. The prop characters were also replaced. The sun became the building, Choo Choo became Munch Jr., and the spider was removed completely and replaced with the wink. The moon, however, stayed behind. This change to the animatronics wasn't the only thing that changed, as the whole company was rebranded, and the showbiz pizza name was dropped in favor of the name Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza. Though some stores still kept the showbiz name, but I'm not sure if Colerain did. Which, speaking of them, Colerain started Concept Unification on April 29, 1991, and the whole process was completed a short while later. This saddened many showbiz fans as the characters they knew and loved for years were now dead, and in their place were these essentially knockoffs. Now, I do actually like the Chuck E. Cheese bots, but it's still sad to see the Rock of Fire go. You can actually watch the full Concept Unification tape on YouTube, but I will warn you, it will make you cry. Despite the removal of all showbiz and Rock of Fire branding, the now Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza still did well for business. Kids seemed to enjoy it, even if the adults didn't. Kind of like those Disney live-action remakes. Anyway, so a few years after concept unification occurred, the building received a small remodel that removed a few more showbiz remnants and added a few new games and rides, like a basketball hoop and that white horse ride. They also added sky tubes to the location as well as other locations in the mid-90s. The Chuck E. Cheese mascot suit was also switched out for the Tux suit, who would later become Cool Chuck and Avenger Chuck. By the early to mid-2000s, things really started to change at Colerain's Chuck E. Cheese. First, it officially became a Phase 3 store, and the whole restaurant received a major remodel, with a new paint job, new posters, and a brand new logo, which was the classic Phase 3 Cool Chuck, as well as the red and yellow awnings. Also, the road sign out in front of the building was changed to better fit the remodel, and I'm beginning to wonder if that sign was a remnant from the showbiz pizza days. The other changes made were to the animatronic three-stage show. Such as the latex masks each of the characters had on was replaced with plastic masks, the ones you see on most three-stage shows today. Chuck E. Cheese himself was also changed as they removed his tuxedo and derby hat and replaced it with the Cool Chuck outfit. 
Also, a lot of props and prop animatronics were removed too, such as Munch Jr., the 90s decor on the TV next to Chuck, and Pizza Cam was removed somewhere between 2000 and 2001. Also, I just realized that the front of Pasquale's drum is the same as the front of Duke's drum. So hey, at least one showbiz remnant stayed behind. And last but not least, the curtains on the stage were removed in 2008. The last major change to occur was in the summer of 2009, when the building went through another major remodel. It transitioned from a Phase 3 store to a Phase 4 store, and the color scheme on the awnings was changed from red and yellow to purple and red. The whole front of the building was expanded and was rounded out a little more, and we got the square patterns with the Adventure Chuck Thumbs Up logo. Other changes made include the removal of some of the older 90s posters, the removal of the showroom walls making the stage area not so dark, and the addition of newer arcade games and artwork on the walls. In late 2012, Chuck E. Cheese's as a whole began to do some changes. Chief among them is that Chuck E. Cheese got redesigned into Rockstar Chuck. So with a new Chuck, obviously that meant some new changes were coming. Oddly enough, around this time, Colerain's Chucky bot was changed from Cool Chuck to Avenger Chuck, in terms of his clothing. I'm not sure if he was given this outfit before the redesign or after the redesign. But other than Chuck, nothing else in the restaurant was changed. They still had the same games, decor, and stage show. More years went by and the Chuck E. Cheese's and Coal Rain was still doing well. At this point, it was considered a fan favorite and beloved location for not just people in Cincinnati, but to the whole Chuck E. Cheese fandom. However, by the mid to late 2010s, things started to go downhill. The animatronics were starting to show their age and they weren't being taken care of too well and started breaking down and malfunctioning. I mean, look at this, Chuck's mouth can't even move. Not to mention that Mr. Moon, one of the last showbiz remnants, was removed in December 2017. However, Mr. Building, surprisingly, was kept at least until 2018. And that's it. That's pretty much the entire history of Cole Rain's Chuck E. Cheese slash Showbiz Pizza. Now, I bet you probably wanted to get out of bed and go visit right now. Well, you might want to sit down for this, as I've got some bad news. Happy birthday! Thanks, Mom! Whoa! Birthday! Introducing birthday parties with unlimited games at Chuck E. Cheese's. All the tickets you can win, all the games you can play, only at Chuck E. Cheese's. On September 22, 2019, after 37 years in operation, the Chuck E. Cheese's in Rain Avenue closed for good, causing heartbreak in everybody who loved and visited the restaurant. Now, when news broke out of Rain's closure, people were absolutely sad, but it was also kind of expected. You see, the surrounding area where Chuck E. Cheese was located at was not a good spot, especially if children are there. There was tons of drug activities going on in that area, and at the Chuck E. Cheese, somebody actually overdosed in the bathroom. The people who worked there were also considered very rude, although others have said that this is simply not true. And customers had several things stolen from them there. Police were also at the location almost every single day and made people feel very uncomfortable. While all those mentioned definitely contributed to its closure, the real reason why Coal Rain closed was because of a lease disagreement with the property owners. So to sum things up, the owners of the building wanted more money than what CEC Entertainment was going to pay. And so CEC, being the cheapskates they are, decided to just shut down the location, not giving a single crap. And so slowly but surely, the building had all of its branding removed, the animatronics were taken apart and sent to other Chuck E. Cheese locations for spare parts. The front logo outside was immediately taken down, leaving a label scar. What I find interesting is that, not even a week after its closure, the inside looked like a complete dump. There was trash everywhere, games and tables were flipped over, and what looks like graffiti over some of the cabinets. You can even see the animatronics just laying there on the floor. How the heck did the inside get so destroyed? 
It looked like it had been abandoned for years. As of today, 2022, the building is still sitting abandoned and rotting away. People driving by the store may not know what it was, but to us it was once one of the most magical places to visit. If you want to visit the building, the address is 8801 Colerain Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio 45251. It's actually located in Grosbeck, Ohio, not Cincinnati. But I mean, Grosbeck is still in Cincinnati. Interestingly, the lights on the building still light up at night, and the building is getting some sort of use again. So right next to the Chuck E. Cheese is a Joseph and Chevrolet car dealership, and they have a lot of cars to sell but not a lot of space in their parking lot. So they actually use the Chuck E. Cheese parking lot to put more of their cars in. But the building itself isn't being used, and ever since its closure there have been many rumors of it soon being demolished. It's safe to say that its future isn't so bright, and if you were a fan of this location growing up, you may want to visit it soon because who knows how long it'll be there for. So this officially concludes the entire history of the Chuck E. Cheese's slash Showbiz Pizza on Colerain Avenue. I'm sorry if I upset you guys to the point of crying. I know this location meant so much to so many people. And even though this was a sad ending, we're still not done, as we have one more location to talk about. And I know some may not like this, but we have to talk about it. Jesus, kids never sing the blues. So let's go back one more time to the summer of 1990, when a brand new Chuck E. Cheese's opened in Cincinnati in, in the Eastgate Square shopping mall, right next to a Walmart. Fifty people were hired in time for the grand opening, and they even paid above minimum wage which was rare for a Chuck E. Cheese. The franchise owner was Bernstein Restaurant Group, not to be confused with the Bernstein Bears. This group also owned the Chuck E. Cheese's located in Florence, Kentucky. And don't you worry, a history video on that location will be coming this year. Sadly, there's not much information on this location when it first opened, as there's no photos or videos from back in the 90s, so I'll have to guess what they had once again. The exterior was different than what it looks like today, but again no photos exist of its original exterior, so I'm not sure what it looked like, though it probably wasn't anything too special. The logo was the standard Chuck E. Cheese pizza logo that was also used at the Colerain location, since that was the logo at the time. Here's a fun fact, the kid check stand has wood paneling, and that wood paneling has actually been there since the very beginning, when this store first opened. There's also some by the restrooms. Okay, so I'm just going to say something. This may not be too surprising, but it's still noteworthy. A lot of people actually don't like this location. That's right, this location is actually disliked by a lot of CEC fans, especially the ones in Ohio. I really don't understand why. I actually think it's a decent location. I believe it's because the location is pretty far from any of the other Chuck E. Cheese locations in Ohio. For example, the distance from here to Colerain's Chuck E. Cheese is almost two hours away. That's pretty freaking far for a location in the same city as the other. Another reason people don't like this location is because of its stage setup, but I'll get to that later. But now that we're talking about the animatronics, let me explain what they originally had. As for the animatronics show, they actually had something cool, something that was just starting to get introduced into locations at the time. They had a rocker stage. It was actually the third to last store to have one. 
For those of you who don't know about this legendary stage, it was first created in 1988 and it features the five main characters on a stage that resembled a house. It also featured singing flowers. It was similar to the C stage which was created around the same time. On both stages, Munch and Pasquale were behind windows, while Chuck E. Cheese, Jasper, and Helen were in the center. While on the subject of characters, it seems the Cincinnati location had the characters in unique costumes. I think. There's not too many photos of their stage, so I can't really figure out if the outfits were unique. What is unique is that Jasper has a Pizza Time Theater mask, which were being phased out for newer masks at the time. But I guess they chose to keep theirs, Eastgate was also the second to last location to have Jasper's banjo. Helen was also unique, as not only was she in a swing, which was normal for a rocker stage, but she also still had her Broadway mask all the way up until the location remodeled. The dining area was also unique, as even though it was a brand new location with a rocker stage, they had balcony stage dining, which, okay. I didn't know there was a difference, but I thought all seating was the same. Another thing to mention is that there's conflicting reports of people claiming that when this location first opened, they had a King animatronic. But I believe this to be false, as those were removed from locations in the 90s. Oh, I forgot to mention this earlier, but the rocker stage also had that pull-down banner thing that says Chucky Live, that covered the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic when the mascot came out to perform just so that they wouldn't confuse the children. If only they still did that today. However, all good things must come to an end, as after 15 years, the rocker stage was removed in 2005, making it the second to last rocker stage in existence. Now, the reason why the rocker stage was removed is unknown, but it was likely because of its age, or corporate wanted them to remove it since the whole store was getting remodeled into a Phase 3 store. What's interesting is that even when it became a Phase 3 store, they still kept some old decorations, and some still remain to this day, including this Chuck E. Cheese Mount Rushmore wall art piece thing. So what replaced the rocker stage? Well, something that wasn't as cool. During the 2005 remodel, the rocker stage was replaced with a different kind of stage that a lot of people don't like too much. Yeah, it was a Studio C Kappa. That's right, a Studio C Kappa replaced a rocker stage. Talk about disappointment. Especially when you consider the fact that Studio C Kappas were already getting discontinued at the time of this stage's installation. Now normally I like Studio C stages, but I can't like this decision they made. They no longer had all five characters, instead it was just a single Chuck E. Cheese bot with 16 movements created by the Garner Holt Company, and right beside him were a few TVs and a blue screen with a camera. Despite the remodel and the Studio C Kappa replacing the Great Rocker stage, the location still did really well for the company and the surrounding area. The Eastgate location's owner was even awarded Chuck E. Cheese's Franchisee of the Year by CEC Entertainment in 2006. He was awarded a plaque citing the franchisee's continued excellent in operation and commitment to in CEC's concept for the chain. However, things would go downhill very quickly very soon, in terms of the restaurant itself. After a few years of being a Phase 3 store, the restaurant was upgraded to a Phase 4 store, which meant that more old 90s decor was removed and replaced with more modern Avenger artwork. Some of the classic games were also removed, but everything else pretty much stayed the same, except for some new colored walls and oh yeah, the animatronic. The Studio C was downgraded from a Kappa to a Studio C Beta. Still with the same 16 movement Chuck E. Cheese bought, but now all the Kappa elements were gone and replaced with beta features. Although, if you visit the store today, you can clearly tell it was a Kappa at one point. Some people even consider it a beta and Kappa mix. Also, is it just me or does the wall with the TVs on it look different compared to normal betas? I don't know, maybe it's just me. Other changes include a new logo onto the front of the store, the inclusion of the ticket blaster, the removal of sky tubes, even though that was way later, and even more Phase 4 decor. That was a great rhyme.
And that brings us to today. As of January 2022, the Chuck E. Cheese's in Cincinnati, Ohio, also known as Eastgate, is still alive and doing somewhat well, with a four-star rating on Google. If you want to visit the only Chuck E. Cheese's left in Cincinnati, then it's located at 4394 Eastgate Square Drive Street, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45245. And if you do visit, then tell them Nathan sent you. It's unclear if this location is going to be receiving 2.0 as there's been no mentions of it by anybody working there or fans who visit, so it seems safe for now. So this officially concludes all of the history of all the Chuck E. Cheese's and Showbiz Pizza locations in Cincinnati, Ohio. But before I go, I want to quickly mention some neat bonus content relating to Cincy Chuck E. Cheese's. Big wins, big shots, big grins, little price. 25 cent fun. One quarter gets one token, gets any game or ride. Big Little price at Chuck E. Cheese's. Where a kid can be a kid. Welcome to the bonus chapter of the history of Chuck E. Cheese's and Showbiz Pizza in Cincinnati. Now what kind of bonus content will be in this chapter? Well, what about a cancelled location? So sometime in the early 80s before the opening of the two Pizza Time theaters, and maybe even before the opening of Coleraine Showbiz Pizza, the Bernsteins, yes, the same ones who own Eastgate, proposed two restaurants to the city of Cincinnati. One was an adult restaurant that featured alcohol and live entertainment, while the other one was something truly amazing. Proposed at this meeting was a Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater showboat. A Chuck E. Cheese's on a boat. How amazing is that? Now, I'm not sure if the boat was going to sail around or if it would be permanently docked. But either way, this would have been fantastic. And this location would have had it all, from the games to the animatronics. All on a boat on the Ohio River. That would have either been located in Cincinnati or Covington, Kentucky. So, what happened? Well, the city ended up rejecting the proposal as they felt it was too much money, and the idea was cancelled, never brought up again. But hey, at least the Bernsteins didn't give up on good old Chuck, as they went on to create the Florence location and the Eastgate locations. The next and final bonus content I want to mention is actually not a restaurant, or a mall, or a showboat, but rather, a grocery store. That's right, we're going to Jungle Gems. For those of you who haven't heard of this place, then you're definitely missing out. But to summarize, it's basically the Disneyland of grocery stores because it's a store, but it's so heavily themed it resembles a theme park. Not to mention how big it is. Well, among the wacky and unusual displays, there are several animatronics including former Pizza Time Theater characters. In the pets aisle, located right above you are the classic Warblets. Not the ones that were present at the Cincinnati locations, but the older, late 70s version. They really don't do much, but they do occasionally move their mouths and barely rock back and forth. Which is more than I can say about old Pedro here. Now, at first glance, this guy may look like a Pasquale retrofit, but actually, his mech inside is the same one that Chucky had. Or Helen. I can't really tell. But the cosmetics are that of Pasquale's. Unfortunately, Pedro doesn't move anymore. Actually, I'm not even sure if he did move since all the videos I found he wasn't moving. And last but certainly not least, we have the most well-known of the Jungle Gems animatronics, The King. Or actually, they changed his name to Elvis. So Elvis here, aka The King, is decked out in a turquoise outfit, as well as a Santa outfit for Christmas, with a neon guitar behind him and several photos of the real-life Elvis. He also now runs on servos, and is on a timer where every five minutes he performs. What this king is probably best known for is that for the longest time he was in really bad shape. He barely moved at all and sometimes didn't even open his eyes. Thankfully in 2019 he was fixed up and moves a lot better now, even if the air pressure is a little low. It's actually unclear as to when all of these guys were brought into Jungle Gems, and even where they came from. The king is said to have been there for over 15 years, but it's unclear for the others. 
What I do know is that there was actually another Pizza Time character present at Jungle Gyms for quite a while. It was none other than Dolly Dimples the Hippo herself. Now sadly, I don't know how long she was there for or where she is now, but hey look, it's Dolly Dimples. And there you have it, the history of Chuck E. Cheese's and Showbiz Pizza in Cincinnati, Ohio. I know this video was really long, I tried to condense the history down as much as possible, but there was just so much information on a lot of these locations. I mean, there was five of them. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the History of series. Bye-bye! He's as free as the breeze, he's always the tease He lives in the jungle and he hangs by his knees As he swings from the trees without a trapeze In his PBTs <laughs> He's got a union card and he's practicing hard Can play the guitar, gonna be a big star Yeah, he's gonna go far and carry moonbeams home in a jar You know the Chet's guitar chord C-O-B Makes A and E and he's working on B Dixie and W and R and B and me and the chimpanzee agree that one day soon he'll be a celebrity. Get it, get it, get it, ow! Oh! Guitar man, and his jungle band. He's all you can stand. Give him a hand, guitars and do it, son. Super Bowl. I feel like I might pass out. I need to do something to celebrate. Alright, I'm gonna have to get some wings, I'm gonna get some popcorn, get some pizza art. But what should I do for a history video? I already did Who Day. I already did Louis the Cardinal. Wait a minute. Huh. I forgot I had this thing. Okay. We'll see. <laughs>